Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have another top 5 video for you guys on Reddit Online, and this is a video that I wanted to make for some time, and what pushed me to make this video is I've seen a lot of comments of just people just saying that, oh, GT Online is better than Reddit Online in every single aspect. Well, I beg to differ on that. Now look, the purpose of this video is not to attack GT Online. I'm not even saying that, that Reddit Online is the better game. I don't truly think that you can compare the two games. But instead, what I'll be doing is I'll be comparing features that are similar. So things that are kind of similar in between the two games, and I'll be explaining some things that Reddit Online does better. This video is to hopefully push GT Online to actually improve those things, because most of the things on this list GT Online could improve, some of them they can't, but a lot of them they can. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video, and I would ask you, even if you disagree with me, to please hear me out on what I have to say. I have over 400 days played on GT Online, and I've been playing Reddit Online for almost every day for the past year, and I've been playing it since day one. So there are some things that Reddit Online does better than GT Online, despite what people say. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Starting off at number 5, we have two currencies and better daily challenges. So in Reddit Online, there's two currencies. There's cash, which you pretty much earn with everything, and then there's gold bars. Now, gold bars you earn in activities like stranger missions, bounty hunter missions, um, resetting challenges, daily challenges, um, showdowns, free mode events. There's a few ways to make gold bars, not as much as cash, but in a lot of the activities that you earn gold bars in, you also earn cash. So you're earning two currencies at the same time, where in GT Online, you're only earning one currency. And the microtransactions in GT Online's, in GT Online are based on cash, shark cards. Whereas in Reddit Online, it's based on gold bars. So you can grind gold bars, you can save up a ton of them, and then you can be ready for the next update. And the amount of gold bars that I've spent on updates in Reddit Online, in comparison to the amount of money that I've spent on updates in GT Online, the updates in GT Online tend to be just much more expensive. Gold bars in general, they're just easier to earn, and I know about the daily challenge problem. I'm no, I'm very well aware of it, I know they nerf daily challenges, I'm pissed about that too. But even with the daily challenge nerf, that's still a great way to earn gold bars. And here's the thing about it, if you compare the daily challenges in Red Dead Online to the daily challenges in GTA Online, the daily challenges in GTA Online really suck. They really do. Like, I don't really hear anybody doing daily challenges in GTA Online. I hear a ton of people that are doing daily challenges in Reddit Online, but I almost never hear it in GTA Online. In GTA Online, if you did all 28 daily challenges, you know, you get $750,000 at the end. Which, you know, isn't that much if you think about it. Because you could just run a Cayo Perico heist, and you could get way more than that in running a heist between 1 to 2 hours versus doing daily challenges for 28 days. So the daily challenges on GT Online, they're just nowhere near as good as the daily challenges in Reddit Online. And as for the two currency system, a lot of games that have two currencies in them, they'll have one currency that you just grind in the game, but then there's also another currency that you can only earn by buying microtransactions. But the nice thing about Reddit Online is that you can earn both currencies by playing the game. I wish that GT Online maybe had an extra currency, or maybe better yet, if the daily challenges were just better in general, you know, maybe doubled their pay. But that's that for that point. Let's move on to point number four. At number four, we have better at multitasking. Now, GT Online, you can multitask to some extent, but the most that you can multitask in GT Online is you can start up a mission like Headhunter or even like a heist prep, and then in between, you could have your businesses producing. So you could have nightclub, MC businesses, and bunker producing. But that's just businesses in the background that are producing. In Reddit Online, you can have businesses producing, but on top of that, you can also do act other activities at the same time. How? Let me explain. Take a look at this, for instance. I'm running multiple roles at the same time right here. I'm doing the Bounty Hunter. And while I'm doing the Bounty Hunter, I'm also getting collectibles. So I'm playing the Bounty Hunter, I'm getting collectibles. And on top of that, while I'm getting the collectibles, I'm also looking for different herbs, which are actually great for my moonshine business. And I'm also hunting and bringing back carcasses and pelts to crypts. So running down the timer on the bounty missions, getting collectibles, looking for herbs, and bringing carcasses back so I can fill up my trader business. Now the thing about this is that in GTA Online, you can't buy supplies even if you're in the middle of a mission. This is where in Reddit Online, you can't buy supplies during the mission but you can bring materials to Crips, so you can hunt whatever you want, and you can bring that to him, even if you're in the middle of a mission, which is just really nice. And look at this, I can also sedate animals. So I can run pretty much the majority of the stuff. Naturalist, I can run sedating animals, I can run collector, getting
moonshine collectibles, I can fill up my trader business, and I can get herbs for the moonshine business. Unfortunately, I can't access the moonshine business itself during the mission, but I can still um, get herbs for that. And I'm running the bounty hunter. So I'm running on the timer on the bounty hunter. The longer I take on the mission, the more money I get back. So when it comes to Reddit Online, while you're just exploring and you're doing a single mission, you can just do so many other things at once. Next at number three, we have almost everything is solo. Now in free mode and Red Dead Online, pretty much everything is solo. Every new DLC that comes out, you can do solo. You can do everything co-op, but it's also really easy to do everything solo. Now take a look at this. With the Bounty Hunter, you can go and capture as many targets as you want by yourself. Whereas in GTA Online, when you try to do certain activities, it's just so difficult to do that solo. For example, with the smugglers run hangar business, in that one, if you're doing it by yourself, you only spawn one crate at a time, meaning you'd have to do 50 missions versus if you did it with four people, you would pick up four crates on each mission. So you see how just GT Online, just a lot of the missions, they just really force you to have a lot of people with you. And especially on MC missions, you have that dreaded post-op cell mission with just three vehicles. So there's a lot of missions that you sell where you have multiple vehicles. This is very frustrating. Even if you try to pick up CEO crates, if you pick up three crates at a time, oftentimes you have like three crate drops instead of just having one vehicle. So it just takes really, really long. And there are things that are solo friendly in GT Online. Don't get me wrong. Rockstar is heading in this direction. They have the Cayo Perico heist, which that everybody can do solo in that, no problem. You also have um, the nightclub, which is always one delivery vehicle. Vehicle. You have import-export, which is pretty solo-friendly, um, but there's a lot of activities in GTA, and GTA Online that are just not solo-friendly. And this is the number one complaint I hear from people. In Red Dead Online, like I said, Bounty Hunter, you can do the whole thing solo, and you can even go after six target bounties by yourself. It can get frustrating, but you can still do it by yourself. Rockstar added a bounty wagon, where you actually, we can actually put all those targets in at once versus where you would have to just go and pick them up, kill them, and then drop them off each time because then they would escape um, back and forth. So with the bounty wagon, you, one player can transport multiple targets versus in GTA Online where they just force you into multiple vehicles, especially on cell missions. Now, in relation to other roles, like the trader, the trader you can do all solo. Just bring Crips back materials, hunt, buy supplies or steal supplies, and then it's just one delivery vehicle. That's it. It does appear on the map, unfortunately, but very few people will actually attack you. You can just deliver it, and the best part about this is even though it's solo friendly, if somebody else helps you with this, they get 50% of your trader sale. So if I'm selling for max $625 and somebody else is in my um, posse and they help me with that, they get $312.50 back. That's a lot of money in Red Dead Online. That's half of my sale right there. This is a different attitude on both games. In GT Online, I don't see as many people wanting to help sell businesses, and that's because you don't get that much of a payout for helping. Certain MC businesses, sure, you'll get a decent amount, but it's nowhere in comparison to, GT to Red Dead Online. Where in Red Dead Online, it's actually the opposite where people will be asking hey do you need help selling your your trader business so there's a big difference there as for the collector you can just run around use the collector map which you can locate pretty much the majority of the collect collectibles in the game that's the jean rupke map i'll link that down below it's really useful you can do that all solo and even if you have people in your posse they can help you out they can follow follow you around and if you pick pick something up they can follow you to that same place and pick that same collectible up so it works for everyone as for the moonshiner, it's easy. Moonshine, you just buy the mash, you give the ingredients, it produces produces 48 minutes, the best moonshine possible if you have the best one, and you just sell it. Always one delivery vehicle, route isn't too far, you can do it solo no problem. And then we have um, the naturalist. Naturalist also, very solo friendly. All you basically do is just run around and you hunt or sedate animals. That's it. As for the moonshiner, going back to that, if you help with moonshine sales, you get like $40 um, uh, back if you're doing like, you know, a big sale, like you're doing the best sale possible, but that's still a decent amount of money for less than five minutes for a uh, for a mission. So the point that I'm making is everything is pretty much solo um, friendly in Reddit Online. And this is the number one complaint I hear from people in GTA Online, that there's not enough things that are solo friendly. But then I tell it to this, these same people. I tell them, hey, everything on Reddit Online is solo friendly, but they just still don't want to give Reddit Online a chance. So if you like solo activities, you'll definitely like Reddit Online. You can pretty much do everything um, by yourself. And the best part is Rockstar is adding even more solo stuff to this game. They actually posted this uh, a few weeks ago on the Newswire, this message right here. So they're going to be adding more solo stuff in the future. Moving on to number two, we have better anti-griefing measures. Now, Reddit Online handles and deals with griefers much better than GT Online, where GT Online, it's pretty much a disaster. Now, the griefing can be really, really bad in GT Online. Let's compare this to Reddit Online. Now, when Reddit Online first came out, it was pretty bad. People were constantly shooting each other and killing each other for no reason. However, with 
updates that progressed over time, it made griefing much more difficult. So let me explain. In February of 2019, with the February update, over two years ago, what happened was Rockstar had actually taken off map icons. So they took off map icons for long distance. So when you were close to people, you would see their map icon. But if you were across the map from somebody or a good distance, you wouldn't see their icon a lot. Now, I personally think this is a good change. I like not knowing where people are. When they get close to you, you do see their icon. However, if somebody is killing other people for no reason, and the game clearly marks them as the aggressor, and they have high hostility, they're going to appear as red for a greater distance. So people will be able to see where these players are on the map, but those players will not be able to see where the friendly players are. But there's even more stuff that Rockstar added. So Rockstar added defensive mode in May of 2019. Now, defensive mode, you can turn this on at any time and you can run through the missions. There are certain missions where I believe that defensive mode does not work, like for instance defensive mode, it will not work on trader sales and I don't think it'll work on moonshine sales either. However, it will work on bounty hunter missions and just general free mode activities. Now what defensive mode basically does is it puts other players in free aim when they try to kill you for no reason. You will also be put in free aim, but you also take reduced damage. And you can see right here, I was testing this with my friend um, EJ, and I shot him in the head three times with a Lamat to kill him. So you do take a lot less reduced damage. But if you use a shotgun at close range, you can kill them in one shot, but it's pretty difficult to hit somebody in free aim, especially when they're moving around. So it makes it much easier to escape from people. But let me show you guys this example right here. This is when defensive mode was first added back in like May of 2019. So me and my friend back then, we were just running around exploring the map and these players attacked us for no reason. And we turned on defensive mode in the middle of combat. And what happened was these players were actually struggling to kill us. So a lot of these players are so used to auto aim, but the second that you turn on defensive mode, they just struggle. Now, this can easily be added to GT Online, even with the overpowered weaponized vehicles like the Oppressor Mark II. If you had defensive mode in GT Online, imagine that, where other players would automatically be put in free aim um, to try to kill you. Imagine they, if they were on an Oppressor Mark II, they couldn't lock onto your vehicle. They couldn't lock onto your vehicle, and on top of that, they would actually your vehicle would actually take a few missiles because you'd, you'd also have increased health as well as your vehicle. So things like this could definitely be added to GT Online. And on top of that, there's also the bounty system and the parlay system. Now, let me show you guys the bounty system. So, I killed my friend here in a test, and my friend pressed charges on me. Now, whenever somebody presses charges on you, you will get a 50 cent bounty. And each time you kill a player for no reason, your bounty will go up by 50 cents. If you kill cops and NPCs, this bounty will go up by, I think, 20 cents per cop, and I think 10 cents um, per, like, this random civilian NPC. But when you get a $10 bounty, what happens is you're locked out of a lot of activities. Like, you can't do bounty hunter, you can't do stranger missions and bounty hunters will randomly actually spawn at ten dollars and they're, they are very aggressive and if they kill you you lose that bounty on top of that other players can actually go after you when your bounty is over five dollars i believe so there are punishments um that are in the game like the bounties here you do you do get punished for killing other players for no reason whereas in gt online you don't get punished at all for that now, the parlay system. This is probably the most effective tool to dealing with griefers. It's even more effective than um, defensive mode, in my opinion. When somebody kills you for no reason, you have the option of parlaying them. Now, you can see this. We were testing this together. I was testing this with my friend. Now, I parlayed him. And what happened is, when I parlayed him, I told my friend to try to kill me. And my friend could not kill me. He would follow me around. He couldn't do anything. I could do the vast majority of activities. Now, there are certain activities I will concede I can't do. Like, I can't do moonshiner sales and I can't do trader sales while I'm parlaying him because it'll immediately take me out of parlay. But I can run bounty hunter missions. I can run around looking for herbs. I can, um, I can kill NPCs and, like, gang hideouts. I can find collectibles. There's just so much stuff I can do. I can hunt and bring it back to crypts. There's a lot of stuff that I can do. And I'm not limited. Unlike in GT Online, when you're in passive mode, you can't do anything when you're in passive mode. You you can't even shoot your gun. You can't run any missions. So what's the point of being in passive mode? There's just no point to it. When you parlay them, they can't kill you for 10 minutes. And this is this pisses off griefers a lot. They get really annoyed by the fact that you can't kill them. And when the parlay timer goes down and they kill you again, you can just parlay them and they can't kill you. So my point is, this game deals with griefers just so much better than GT Online. And every single one of these um, criticisms I'm saying, I hope that GT Online and implements them. It's not to attack GTA. I'm just saying that Reddit Online handles this issue just so much better. Before I reveal the number one thing that I think works better in Reddit Online than in GTA Online, I wanted to make a special mention, and that was that there's just much more random events in the world in Reddit Online. Now, there are random events in GTA Online, but, you know, the best random event that I can think of is business battles. 
there isn't really much more than that, where, as in Resident Online, there's just much more things that pop up in the world. You know, there's strangers that will re request help and could betray you. There's times when a stranger is kidnapped and you can go save him. There's random moonshine missions that are scattered around the map, gang hideouts. Um, there's just a lot more random activities in Resident Online, random events, I should say, than in GTA Online. And number one, the number one thing that just works better in Red Dead Online than in GTA Online is players on average are just much more friendly in Red Dead Online than in GTA Online. Now, I'm trying not to attack GTA Online when I say this, but I pretty much know it as a fact that the people on Red Dead Online on average are just more friendly. It's just a simple fact. It's just undeniable. Now, look, I'm not denying that there's tons of friendly people and nice people on GTA Online. I have over 400 days played on the game. We have a great community and a lot of nice people that help each other out. But I'm not talking about my community when I say this. I'm just talking about the average GTA lobby. Think about just being in a 30-player lobby. Think about being in a full lobby. Do you ever see a peaceful lobby in GTA Online? It's almost never. Whenever you join a 30-player lobby, even if you join free aim lobbies, which tend to be more peaceful, people are still constantly killing each other. There's still war zones going around. There's still people blowing each other up with oppressor mark twos. It's just all over the place. People don't leave you alone. They chase after you. They blow you up. They destroy your cargo. They just don't stop. It just, does, it just doesn't end. At almost every lot, full lobby that you join, you see some kind of war zone. You can't drive down the street. At, you can't drive down the same street as somebody without them firing an RPG at you. You can't do that. You can't get near people without them blowing you up, without them killing you. And sometimes people even kill it because they think you're going to attack them. They just get scared that you're getting close to them and they just open fire, which I don't blame them to an extent. But in Reddit Online, you can see the difference. In Reddit Online, I walk next to people all the time. And now some people might say, oh, it's because of the weaponized vehicles. But even without the weaponized vehicles, people will still shoot each other and kill each other. When Reddit Online is a complete different, I go up to people, I wave to people, they wave back. Very rarely do I actually get attacked. I'll walk down the streets of San Denis and I'll see like five people there and they're all just peaceful. They're all just hanging out. Nobody's killing each other. But in GTA Online, you don't really see this unless it's a group of friends, then they're not going to kill each other. But on average, if it's just random players meeting up, they're almost always going to kill each other. So that's the thing about Red Dead Online, is just people on the game are just much more friendly on average. And I don't think this is ever really going to change for GTA Online. People on Reddit Online are so friendly that even players that are shooting at NPCs, they're fighting cops or other NPCs, they won't consider shooting you even when you ride past them. Like this guy here, I rode right past him when he was in combat against NPCs, not once did he consider shooting me. And I went up to him and I revived him because I wanted to be a nice player. So people on average on this game are just more nicer than people on average on GTA. It's just a simple fact. It has nothing to do with the player base size because even though Reddit Online has a smaller player base and GTA Online has a larger player base, when you meet the same amount of people in a GTA lobby versus the same amount of people in a Red Dead lobby, you are much more likely to get attacked in GTA Online. It's a simple, simple fact like that. But what is the reason? Why are players in GTA Online, why do they tend to be more toxic than players in GTA Online? Why? I think the reason is, is I think because GTA Online tends to attract more immature players because there's a lot of players that go on GTA Online, unfortunately, just to grief other players, just to blow players up, just to kill people for no reason. There's people that play GTA Online for that sole reason. It's unfortunate, but there are people like that. Now, I don't really know of people that do stuff like this on Reddit Online. I'm sure there are out there. I've gotten griefed on the game, but I haven't ever really heard of somebody that gets on the game just to kill people for no reason. So there are players out there like that, I'm sure, but it's just nowhere near as common as GTA. And like I said, this isn't an attack on GTA because I know a ton of nice people and friendly people on GTA, but it's just on average. In Reddit Online, people are just much more friendly. You will notice this if you play the game a lot and you play... GT Online a lot. You will notice it. But that's that for this list. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, you my comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.